Did you know God is the author and the finisher of your faith and he is writing your story even right now. We're so glad that you, we're part of your story today on Hope Today here with Tom and Angela. Such a joy to be joined by all three of you and we have a great guest coming up, Tom. We do. I like being part of people's stories. Yeah. I hope it's a great story that God's <laughs> writing today in your life. But you know, are you going through anything right now? Maybe you are. Are you having trouble getting a big picture perspective on God's work in your life? Boy, that so often that's exactly what we struggle with. But maybe you're even in a dark place and you wonder where God is. Well, coming up, we're going to have a great discussion with Joe L. Malm. He's been through those places and he's going to help us clarify the unique mission and message God has for each one of us. Guys, this is a, going to be a great discussion, Angela. And I, I love Joel has got such a, a great way of expressing this and a perspective on these kind of things. Yeah, I mean, difficult times come for us all. So it's great to be able to listen in and lean into what he's learned from his journey. And I know it'll fill us all with a good perspective for sure. And good perspectives are so important. And you know, a lot of us are walking through different seasons and times in our lives. And we just want to bring to your attention about one family who is in desperate need of our prayers on behalf of their two-year-old little girl in Atlanta, Erica and Blake Stella's daughter, Skyland. There she is right there is battling a rare brain cancer called metablastoma. Now Skyland has spent more than a month in the ICU, unable to see and feel sunlight. And we just want to show you this video that's coming up. That's her father right there that you can see sunlight holding her. That was the first time he was able to hold her just in weeks. And so we just want to show you this coming up, this video of her leaving the ICU and heading into a new room with the window. Take a look at this. <laughs> so sweet. They had a little parade for Skyland, you know, just like she was leaving the ICU. We just want to let you know Skyland is one of the loved ones of Cornerstone Television Network's HR manager, Deb Goodman, and her family is asking everyone to pray for Skyland as she continues on this journey. And we just want to take a moment today to lift her up, her parents, she has siblings, and their entire family in prayer. And we also just want to know, like, let you know that they are having a spaghetti dinner that they're hosting here in Pittsburgh. And so if you want to donate and help this family, because we know medical bills are so high, just give us a call. We'll get you connected at our prayer line at 888-665-4483. So we just want to say Deb and to Erica and Blake and the whole Sellers family and little Skyland that we are here for you. We are praying, interceding. And can you pray Angela for a Skyland and just yes. lift her up? Yes, I would love to. Father, we thank you for Skyland. We thank you that God, you are the creator who knit her together in her mother's womb. We thank you that your hand is able and willing to heal because that's who you are. So we ask even now, Father God, that you would heal Skyland's body from the inside out. You would touch every cell within her, God, that you would minister to her day and night. Father, we pray for her parents and her entire family that your peace would surround them, that you would consume them with the light of love and life that you are. Do what only you can do. Mend, heal, and deliver. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Thanks for praying, Angela. And please uh, continue in prayer for Skyland. I know she's a, she's a twin, so her, you know, her twin has unique challenges facing this. But, uh, you know, when we think about things like that, what, what if everything that has ever happened to you has prepared you for your greatest work? What if those confusing, uncomfortable seasons when you feel like you're walking in circles were actually the path that God was leading you on to fulfill the destiny he has planned for you? Well, Joel Malm is our next guest. And in his book, Connecting the Dots, he's going to help us understand what God is doing when life doesn't make sense. Joel, welcome to Hope Today. Hey, good to be with you. Well, let me ask you, you know, we, uh, you know, Many of us, every one of us, have gone through those dark times. And it's natural to ask the question, why? But you say there's a better question we, sh we should ask. What is that? Well, as a counselor, a master's degree in counseling, I've found that when you start asking why, it doesn't tend to lead good places. There may not be an answer for why right now. The better question is, how am I going to respond right now to what's in front of me? And that's one of the goals of the book is helping you see, look, God hasn't forgotten you. 
He's right here with you. He's working behind the scenes. Most of the time we don't see it or understand it until later, though. So the question why isn't going to lead anywhere good. The question for right now, I say why is for later, how is for now? How am I going to respond to what is, what is happening right now, trusting that ultimately God is going to work all things together for good, including this situation? You know, you have a, a, what seems like to me a pretty unique take on the path that we walk in life. We tend to think linearly, you know, we tend to think start from point A, go to point B to point C. But you have an, another take on uh, walking kind of circular. We don't like the idea of going around the mountain, but could you just explain how, what God has shown you through that? Yeah, so I, I lead hikes around the world, and one of the things... Uh, Psalm 23, when I was in Israel one time, a, a guide said, you know that Psalm 23, that Hebrew word that says, the Lord is my shepherd, he leads me in paths of righteousness. That Hebrew word path, it's the word magol, it actually means paths made of circles. And there's all sorts of, you know, theories on what that means. I'm convinced what it means is God leads us in an ever widening circular path, getting us to where he wants to go. And you probably experienced that in your life where you find yourself going, we're doing this again? but it's just a little bit different or we're here again or this time frame again, maybe every three or five or seven years, you've got a shift in your life and you go, we're doing this again. And I'm convinced that that's our gentle shepherd leading us. You know, we're, we're kind of poofy sheep. We can't necessarily get straight up a hill. So he gently leads us up the hill in circular paths, getting us to the good stuff uh, where, where he wants us to be. And, and I'm, it's a, I believe it's a circular path more than a straight line, but it's an ever widening. It's like a spiral, ever widening, getting us to who he wants us to be. You know, I, 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 in the book, I read that where you talk about going that way up a mountain. And my wife and I are bicyclists, as everyone who's watched this, this show knows, that you do that to get up a mountain on a bicycle too, a lot of times. And but what is the spiritual when you know when you're not kind of going directly towards you want to, where you want to be and, and it's, you kind of can get impatient. So what has God taught you? What what are some of the principles God's taught you as you're on that path? Well, I in the story in the book I tell a story of a crazy year of my life that I felt like was a waste. It, it's one of those things, you know, when you're writing your resume and you leave off that year and people are like, "What happened here?" And you're like, "Yeah, we don't." Eh. Let's not talk about that. Uh, and it was a year that I just couldn't explain it. It felt like a waste of my life. But as I'm further down the road now, I look at it and go, that was one of the most transformative seasons of my life. And as I started looking at my story and listening to stories of hundreds of other people in counseling, I started to see there's a really consistent pattern. There's about nine stages in every season of life that people go through. It actually follows what's called the hero's journey, where there's a there's this transition, uh, this, this moment where life, life changes, uh, and then you have to f have some courage, and then a guide shows up. Of course, our guide is the Holy Spirit. There's a decision you have to make to go all in on the season and fully commit. Then there's a series of challenges. There's a dark cave. And ultimately, you emerge with a different perspective because of what life has done. And I really believe that the ultimate goal of each season is for God to give you more of a mission and a message. Well, let me ask you about some of the things you've noticed as you have uh, been on these journeys. You talk about some gifts, gifts of discomfort. I don't want that gift. You know, I don't, I don't want to have anything to do with the gift of discomfort or the gift of limitation. Could you talk about those gifts and what, how God uses those things? Yeah, I mean, if God really is working all things together for good, we have to believe all things actually means all things. And one of the things he'll often do is when a transition point is coming, when you, when you need a, a turning point in your life, he'll kind of prepare you by making things a little uncomfortable. You know, when, a, when the mother eagle decides it's time for the baby eagles to fly, she starts pulling those soft feathers out of the nest. So they start kind of feeling the poke and they, you know, they're not made to hang out in a nest. They're made to soar. And I believe God sometimes will do that for us in his grace, oddly enough. He'll make things a little uncomfortable so that we're not looking back like King Solomon says, don't, don't look back at the days of the past and say, oh, why were those days better than today? Uh, he makes it a little bit uncomfortable to get us where he wants us to go. And I'm even convinced he uses our enemies, those people that would try and do us harm. If you look at the story of Joseph, you know, at the end of the story, the guys that did him the most harm, his own family, they're, they're freaking out, worried about what he's going to do to them. And he's like, oh, no, don't worry. God sent me ahead of you for the saving of many lives. And oftentimes God will 
he'll take you through a journey and at the end of it, the purpose is for you to rescue the very people who caused the harm to you, but he uses the enemies to push you right to where you need to be. Joe, I just love this whole, like the story of just like our journeys and God's purpose and everything. And I just want to ask you this question and curious, you know, as a counselor, how you've even counseled your clients, but how do we transition well? Because I think we all hit these moments in our life where like it's exciting, transition can be really exciting, it can be terrifying and it can be challenging. So what are some practical things that we can do as we're in the midst of the transition, getting to that new place that we can do in our day to day? Well, I, I tell a story in the book about when my family moved to Central America when I was a kid. As soon as we got there, we experienced an earthquake, and then the volcanoes started erupting. So the sun is kind of blacked out, and I thought, did we arrive at the apocalypse? <laughs> and I talked to one of the local missionaries who had been there for 30 years. He goes, ah, no, it's just a season change. He said, when we shift from the dry season to the rainy season, this always happens. It just means seasons are changing. I think one of the important things to recognize in a turning point is it's probably going to come with some discomfort. Mm -hmm. So what the best thing you can do is, is have courage. And courage is, is G.K. Chesterton says, courage is a contradiction in terms almost. It's like a willingness to die accompanied with a, a desire to live. So you have to kind of throw yourself into the adventure trusting, I really do believe God is directing my steps. And this wasn't the adventure I would have chosen. But hey, you know, it's not an adventure until something goes wrong. Uh, it's an, if it's on your terms, it's not really an adventure. And what I tell people is there's going to be courage required. But, and, and if you'll just go all in, commit to the path, there, it's like Tarzan swinging through the jungle. If he doesn't let go of one vine to grab onto the next vine, he's not going to keep his forward movement. He'll just kind of be hanging there in the middle of the jungle stuck between two vines. So you have to go all in. You have to fully commit. Jesus said that. He said, he said those who don't, basically he says, if you don't go all in, you're not even worthy of the call here. There's a verse where it's one of those savage Jesus things. We're like, wait, that's not very nice, Jesus. He's like, you got to go all in. Going all in is really critical, but I think that a lot of times people sometimes want to forget those painful or traumatic moments in their life. So what would you say to the one who's saying, I just want to forget about that? Well, first of all, you're probably never, as a counselor, I'm just going to tell you this, you're probably never going to forget it, you know, but we do have to forgive. As Christians, we don't forgive and forget. We forgive and remember with forgiveness. So when you've properly processed it, what I've seen is when you've properly processed the hurt that's happened, and oftentimes it takes a couple years to get around. Grief is more of a spiral, again, another spiral than a straight line. We hear of the stages of grief and we think, oh, click, 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 I'm over it. But if you've ever lost something really that you love, it comes back in waves. And, you know, wake up a year, two years, five years later, and it's just as bad as the moment it happened. But every time it gets further and further apart and you just remember, nope, I forgave what happened there. And as you do that, the memory becomes less and less painful. And, and then that's when I think the power happens. When we're willing to tell the story of what happened with forgiveness there's a verse in Revelation that says they overcame by the blood of the lamb and the word of their testimony. The blood of the lamb is that forgiveness that Jesus offered us and he asks us to give to others. But the power really gets ignited when we're willing to tell the story of what happened without bitterness. And then that's when our survival story becomes somebody else's survival manual. You say, man, I've been through that too. But listen, you can make it through this. And that's where you, God's given you that mission and that message through that season and everything that's happened to you has prepared you. Wow, I love that because uh, it's it is so easy to suppress those stories and to and to not not be willing to tell them. But you tell some great stories in the in the book. I I love the story about your friend asking you to come to Mexico not for a week but to take over his ministry, and you told him that uh, I love where you said uh, you said I'll pray about it, which means leave me alone, right? That's kind of what I'll pray about it means. But could you tell me uh, tell us that story and what God did through that? Well, I was looking for a change, but the change that got offered to me wasn't what I wanted. I wanted to be climbing mountains, and we got offered to take over a ministry down right on the water in Mexico. And uh, I love Mexico, but that wasn't the part of Mexico I necessarily wanted to be in. So my friend called. He said, hey, I want you to take over this ministry. I was like, I don't, I don't think that's my calling. He's like, well, I, don't agree. I agree that, that it's not your calling, but we feel like you're the one that's supposed to do it. He kept hassling me, and I said, you know, I dropped the Christian prompt card, like, let me pray about that, brother, you know, which translation that means leave me alone. Well, my friend, he, 
he called me back two weeks later and he said, what'd you hear? And I'm like, about what? He's like, you didn't pray about it. Like, dude, you don't follow up when somebody says, I'll pray about it. You'll leave them alone. And then he goes, what did Emily, your wife, say about it? And I was like, oh, man, I didn't I didn't tell her because I, I knew she actually would pray about it. So uh, we ended up, long story short, we ended up going. But it was, it was a crazy thing because I knew it was something we were supposed to do. But it's still, I didn't. I kind of went kicking and screaming, but the Lord just kept blowing doors open where it was clear that was what I needed to do. And then we went, and it was just as bad, if not worse, than I thought it would be. <laughs> but I now see it was probably one of the most transformative seasons of my life. Yeah, I, I, again, I, I love that you're you're willing to be open about things like that. So what what is the, you know, I was, I was uh, asking some friends of mine, Whenever I read a book, I like to read it like straight through. I don't, I don't look for the back. But you said you have a friend who always reads the back of the book. I know there's a lot of people that do that. They jump right to the last page, try to see where things are going. Where are we going with this? What's, what's the last page here? The last page is this. God is going to waste nothing in your life if you'll, redeem, if you'll give your whole story to him to redeem. Mm. If you'll hold on to nothing, surrender to him. And say, Lord, I'm going to rejoice in my suffering, for I know that suffering produces endurance, endurance produces character, and character produces hope, and hope does not put me to shame. I'm not going to lose heart, though outwardly I'm wasting away, inwardly I'm being renewed day by day. This light and momentary affliction is preparing for me an eternal weight of glory, which is beyond all comparison. So I'm going to fix my eyes not on what is seen, but on what is unseen, for what's seen is temporary, what's unseen is eternal. I didn't come up with that. It's too eloquent for me. That was the Apostle Paul. But... That's where we have to, that, that's the power of his word. We're trusting that ultimately he's going to bring good from this. And the cool thing about it is when he brings good from it, we walk out with a mission. He's given us a unique problem to solve and a message to share for his glory and for our fulfillment. And as we share that message, man, we become lights to the world around you. You let your light shine in this dark, dark world where people say, how do you have so much hope? You say, well, it's because God's love has been poured into my heart as he's been walking in my story, his story, history in my life. I love that phrase by Paul, light momentary affliction. It's always one that, you know, you really have to think about knowing what Paul went through. Would you take a moment? I know this is really hitting someone out there. Would you take a moment to just speak to that person and pray for that person? Yeah, I'll, 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 I'm going to pray, speak. We'll say this. Uh, Man, I, I want to declare in your life that God is accomplishing all things for your good and for his glory. Uh, he's, he's got skin in the game here. This is His glory is at stake, and he is going to accomplish good things in your life. So if you are, if you are struggling right now, know this. Uh, you're probably not going to understand it for a while. Uh, you're going you're gonna to look back, and you're going to go, Oh, that's what that was about. And, and honestly, some of the stuff we're dealing with, we may not understand on this time of the space-time continuum. Uh, this side of it, we may go, man, I don't get it. And I've joked that when I stand before God, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to ask him some questions. But all indications are when we stand before God, we're going to drop to our knees, put our face to the ground, and go, true and just were your judgments. Mm -hmm. Hang on to that hope. True and just are his judgments. He is going to accomplish good things in your life, even through what seems like the worst possible thing right now. Yeah, the book is called Connecting the Dots, What God is Doing When Life Doesn't Make Sense. Joel, Mom, thank you so much for being with us today. Thank you. Well, guys, this is a, you know, a tremendous uh, you know, uh, aspect on those difficulties. And, and we're going we're gonna to take a quick break. When we come back, we're going to talk some more about this. We're going to have a scripture. We're going to have a time of uh, ministry just for you. When Laura called our 24-7 prayer line, she had so much fear that she didn't want to leave her house. She had lost her husband of 54 years just six months earlier. Laura was flipping through TV stations when she came across Cornerstone Television. She felt compelled to call. One of our prayer partners talked, listened, and prayed with her for 45 minutes. At the end, Laura said how much the ministry had helped relieve her fear. Praise God for how He is using CTVN. When you give, you become part of what He is doing. This month, when you give, we'll send wild expectance as our way of saying thank you. 
This book will inspire you to live your life as God intended. To give and request your copy, visit us online at ctvn.org slash donate or call us at 888-665-4483. Hope happens here. Today we have a beautiful scripture that in our interview with Joel, Joel, he alluded to, and it comes from Psalms 23, one through six. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me lie down in the green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. No matter where you are in this journey of life, we read clearly from the psalmist that even if you find yourself in the valley of death, be assured God is with you. I love guys how in this scripture, he begins first kind of declaring like, this is the Lord, he is my shepherd. And then he turns his attention to God and doesn't just keep this conversation going horizontally. Like, yeah, this is about my Lord. He says, no, God, you are with me. You anoint my head with oil. No matter what you're going through, God will truly use it for your good. It doesn't mean it feels good or that it is good, but he will use it for your good. And I love that so much, Angela. And you know, one thing that when I was studying this scripture a while ago, did you know, and it's like, it's the connection points, because even Joel mentioned it when it was talking about that circles with the paths of righteousness. Did you even know that when you look up the Hebrew of the shadow of death, it's not shadow of death, it's deep darkness. You don't, it, this isn't talking about dying. It's talking about being in this pit, being in this place of despair, being in a place of hopelessness. But that's why it's on the other side. Because I've always thought about this scripture. I'm like, if we're talking about being the shadow of death and there's imminent death that is present, but, why, but there's so much hope on the other end and it's because we're in this pit of deep darkness and we've all been there, but God has a hope for us that he is the good shepherd, that he is leading us through the valley. And I remember even hearing somebody say that things only grow in the valley, that it's in those hard places. It's in those places when you wanna give up and you feel like you're surrounded on all sides. Just what Joel was saying, that was such an incredible revelation. I'm just sitting in my spirit, it's like, it's a circle. And it all makes sense. It's like, okay, we're going around this again, but it's enlarging. God is doing something in the midst of that tight and that hard place. So if that's you today, take hold of, this is the promise that you can stand on. You can declare and decree this right over yourself. <laughs> this is a short promise. And you will watch God do that circle around you, dancing around you. You know, I, I want to talk about five words and it's for thou art with me. I still think of it in King James, you know, for, for you are with me. Uh, you know, when you, when you think about difficult times, when you're a kid, uh, guys, uh, uh, this is the way it was for me. When I was a little kid, if something was scary, as soon as I saw my dad, it wasn't scary anymore, you know, because dad was going to take care of it, okay? Dad was big, dad was strong, he could take care of anything, right? And you think about that, the shepherd, uh, you know, Jesus, uh, the, the, the God, our father, he can take care of the thing you're going through. You know, we want to get to that place where we're at in the green pasture. Love me some green pasture. Love me some still waters. Uh, I want to be there. I want to sit there. I want to relax there. But we got, we're going to walk through that dark place. In fact, maybe I, I just got this picture of someone seeing a, a light far off, seeing the good place far off. But uh, all of a sudden you kind of descended. When you descend down into that valley, you don't see that anymore. You're like, hey, where's that nice place I saw, God? Where's that place you were leading me? I don't see it anymore. No, you're down in the valley. But it's all right. It's still there. And God's with you. He's going to lead you through that. So hang on to that promise. Whatever that promise was, it seems like it's not coming to pass. Hang on to it. God's bringing that to pass for you today. Guys, I've seen this in my own life. I've seen promises where I was, uh, I felt like I got a promise from God. And then all of a sudden, I was in a place where Hey, the promise is nowhere, God. I must have misheard you. You must be lying to me. You know, you went somewhere. But no, he's bringing us through, 
bringing us to that place. Yeah, and I think that's how David felt in this moment. Here he was, the anointed king, knew that well, and yet he's running for his life and why the psalm says, you know, why are the wicked prospering, God? And, and here I am trapped and stuck. But David found that in the middle of the valley is where his head was anointed with oil. It was there that he saw the lily of the valley. It was there that his cup runneth over. So whatever valley you face today, or maybe the one that is coming, you know, if we're not in the valley, we're going there at some point. Hold on to the fact that God will use it to anoint your head with oil. And it's not just to take you to a place of preparedness, but it's to prepare a place in you for his spirit to dwell, for his glory to be made known in you. And I know something we were talking about like yesterday, like behind, like behind the scenes was that sometimes I think even God tests us because are you going to worship him for the promise or are you going to worship him for who he is? Yeah, that's sometimes yes. that's what the test is all about. He yes. wants to see like, who are you going to worship? Are you going to bow down to that promise and say like, you know, God, if you don't do this, I stop believing in you. But if you say, you know, I will, though you slay me, yet I trust you. There has been seasons in my life where I came to a point where I had all these words, all these prophets said this, 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 and I said, God, <clears throat> either these are all false, pro false prophets or this is your word. But I'm going to trust you, I'm going to stand by you, and I'm going to worship you. And so even when you're in that dark place, one of the most beautiful things that you can do, worship your heavenly Father. Get on your knees. It may not be pretty. It might be ugly. There's been times I've been weeping and crying, but I just lift my hands up and I say, you are good. You are my father. You are Adonai. You are my prince of peace. You are my all in all. And no matter what I walk through and no matter what I go through, God, you are with me. They did, he's Emmanuel, God with us. He understands the pain that we are walking through. And so many of us right now have burdens. But you know what I love that Jesus says, cast your cares and your burden on me. My yoke is easy and my burden is light. That's the God that we have. That's the God that wants to walk with you in the valley. That's what makes him better than any other God because they're not real. He's the true and living God. He will step in the midst of the situation because even in the hard times, even in those dark places, he wants to make himself known to you today. So do you know Jesus today as your Emmanuel? as your God with you, because that is the greatest hope that we have him and it's in him alone today. On tomorrow's Hope Today, learn how to conquer shame and rest in the one who has taken all shame away. Author and podcaster Jasmine L. Holmes opens up about her own battle with shame and shares how God can break the chains of shame in your life through the power of the gospel. That's tomorrow on Hope Today. Cornerstone Television wishes to thank all our faithful viewers whose consistent prayers and financial support have made this program possible.